I think that you your honey filters that you use a lot are Rosedale. We like their product because, uh, uh, well, they're easy to deal with. They're, I think they're in New Jersey, and they have they, they sell a lot of types of filters. And when you actually the smaller filter that we have will take the same bag as a Man Lake filter. The problem is you can't just call up Man Lake and get different uh, micron bags, but mm -hmm. with Rosedale you can. And that's kind of what got us heading their direction because you can choose all these different types of filters to go in your canister. Rosedale, just like it sounds, R-O-S-E-D-A-L-E. -E. Okay. If you Google them, they come right up. And their customer service is good. You just call them and say, I need, yeah. I need a filter for honey in this application. No, what you need you... to tell them what you want. They, okay. don't, they don't know what you want. You need to say, I need this such and such. But you can go into their catalog online and figure out what you want and then just order that part number. Okay. Yeah. Um, sources for drums. Which, we, and which we, drums to get? Well, new drums are cost prohibitive for us. Well, not prohibitive, but a little bit hard to bite off. We buy used drums from a place called M and M Steel Drum in Canton, North Carolina. And I'll bet in your area around Nashville, you could probably Google drums and find somebody like this fella. He buys drums from uh, food manufacturers generally that have only be used one, been used one time. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my drums have had peanut butter in them, of all things, and they come with a liner, a plastic liner. Even though they have a painted on liner, they'll put a plastic liner in it, fill it with peanut butter, and then when it's all done, he pulls the liner and the drum's just like brand new. And it's used once. And uh, we buy a lot of drums from him because um, Beekeepers, how do I do this without being too critical? They have a tendency to use drums they might should have just let retire. <laughs> Occasionally we get something I call the Mayflower drum, <laughs> uh, which means it looks like it came over on the Mayflower. And we just turn those into burn barrels and sell them out here on the lot for 10 bucks each. And we sell, sell them all. People need to buy burn barrels too. And um, it's up to us to send barrels back to the person that we purchased honey from that's the deal and I've cycled drums so many times with these guys and I'm buying most or all of their crops so usually I'm getting a pretty darn good drum back because it was something I sent to them in the first place um, there's a few drum people down around Atlanta some of these guys want a gouge you need to find the right person we're paying between 17 and 20 drum 20 dollars a drum for the ones I just described and uh, I can handle that. A new drum is just so expensive. And he also gets rejects, like if somebody accidentally got the, like let's say a food processor wanted blue drums and the um, drum manufacturer accidentally painted them black, well they are rejects and he'll pick those up too. So sometimes we're literally getting a new drum, it was just off spec. Enamel lined versus unlined? Well they come with a paint lining that's food grade. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'd, some, some have a shiny finish and some don't, but they're all food grade liners or we, they wouldn't be there. Do you recommend the, the plastic bag liner in the honey? They're a pain in the butt. Pain. They really are. I mean, some people use them, but uh, they really are a pain. So we avoid those. With those, you could use any drum, whether it was rusty or not. And by the way, rust is your absolute worst enemy. You don't want any rust anywhere of any kind. And that's my problem with beekeepers using older drums. If there's a chip of paint or it's been dented and the paint is cracked and suddenly you have this line of rust, that can really have an effect on your honey. The steel and iron are the worst thing you can expose honey to. Um, aluminum is not good, but not as bad because it doesn't rust. Uh, aluminum, because of the acidity of honey, it can actually pick up a flavor from aluminum eventually too. Hmm. Now if it's just passing through like a pipe or something, I, I could probably live with that, but I would never have a holding tank that was made out of aluminum. Um, also pumps, you got to be careful. They're so expensive, but the ideal pump is a stainless steel pump. And I readily admit that some of our gear pumps are brass, but uh, again, the honey's just passing through. So I'm not going to throw away a thousand dollar pump and replace it with a two thousand. Even the inspectors are okay with these brass pumps as long as they can see that the honey is passing through and not sitting in it. 
Um, I've said this in some of my videos, it's very odd that the two metals that don't affect, aren't affected much by honey are silver and gold. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and then stainless steel is next. And, and there's grades of stainless steel too. I mean, you gotta be careful there. You want a high grade, food grade stainless steel. There is such a thing as stainless steel that's not food grade. Vinyl, pla for flexible things, vinyl, food grade vinyl tubing is common. Uh, we have a couple pieces in some of our lines, but again, it doesn't sit there very long. It's just passing through. Have you seen any COVID-related pains in supplies, getting bottles or...? Extremely. Uh, so, yeah, we have really struggled keeping the containers we need. Um, uh, glass was the worst. Uh, I, would, I knew a lot of glass was imported, but I didn't realize how much till we just couldn't get some. Um, we've run out of a few things but, and been, been able to shift over to something else that mm -hmm. had the same volume so we could use the same label. Uh, quart jars were really tough for a long time. And then quart jars still are tough, but we've got a few more leads on a few manufacturers in the United States. And what's happening uh, when you buy containers is that the manufacturer just wants to supply people that they've been doing business with and don't want to take on new customers. And that's been the uh, problem for us. And now we're getting in with a couple manufacturers that have dealt with us enough to where they're starting to feel like we're a regular customer and they'll sell to us. Mm -hmm. They're having a problem getting uh, the uh, raw materials. It's not just the manufacturing, but it's uh, uh, finding the raw materials to do the manufacturing. So uh, Arkansas Glass, which is down in Arkansas, I don't know what's going on down there. They were a huge supplier of glass in the southeast and they're really struggling. They're just not putting out the product like they used to. I've heard several excuses. At one time, last winter, they were saying they couldn't get enough natural gas. It was a cold, there was a cold snap and uh, the community that they're in, now, now I gotta be careful, this is third hand information, may not be true, might get a nasty little comment from Arkansas Glass, but <laughs> what I understand is that at one point, last winter or the winter before, is that uh, the community was using so much natural gas to keep the homes and everything warm that they um, rationed the natural gas that uh, Arkansas Glass was able to use. And then the next thing I heard is that they were having a hard time keeping help because of COVID. and. You know, it takes a lot of people to stack the product in a cardboard box at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that's where they were running into trouble. So um, the supply chain issues, of course, are going to cause you to probably try to stock more than you normally would, which I, yeah, we're, adds inventory costs, it adds storage costs. Yeah. It, we just did, and you'll see when we walk out, we just added another <clears throat> section of mezzanine so we can put more product in stock so we have a bigger cushion. Uh, we just put a semi load of glass upstairs yeah. just a couple days ago. I've got a tiny little beekeeping operation and it's hard finding bottles. You know, it really is. I'm on a wait yeah. list. I'm trying to buy now for next year. That's because you're not a established yeah. long-term regular customer. Yeah. Now, I can supply you bottles that are the same thing we use because mm -hmm. we keep those in stock so you can keep that in mind. Not That's a fancy bottle there, we can't do that. But any standard type of bottle we could help you with. That's a nice package you got there. I like your label. I appreciate it. Yeah.